All right, so yeah, I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this um, after, well, I, he wasn't prodding me that way, but um, Clark Commando 1983, Mark Leggero, uh contacted me and said, hey, how, uh, how are you getting on with the, um, the World War One Illustrated magazines that I sent you over? Have you gone through them? You know, like, what, uh, aren't, isn't the artwork just amazing? And I was like, oh, darn, I haven't, uh, like, I only looked at them for a little bit, not very long, and I was like, um, you know what, I was like, Let's go and just go take a look at one. Uh, like, I mean, just a little bit more in detail. And I'm so happy he, he uh, uh, mentioned it to me. Uh, well, reminded me of the magazines, basically, because I was like, oh, my gosh. And I'm, when I got to that point, I was like, you know what? I'm, I was going through here, the first issue, and I went, uh, wait a minute. Why not do a video, like, uh, for each each issue. I don't know how, like, when I'm going to do the next one, because I want to read the whole thing, but I, I'm going to leaf through it and try to give you guys a bit of a vibe or a feel for what these uh, things are like. They're amazing. I'm going to start off, I'm, uh, I am I scanned this in so I don't have to read it, but it's um, by Dana Lombardi, and the odd thing is, is that um, um, uh, I didn't clue in uh, who Dana Lombardi is until I see I saw his picture, which you're going to see in a minute. Uh, so, um, Clark Commando 1983 is like, oh, you know, uh, my friend Dana Lombardi, and it, the name didn't ring a bell. And then um, I saw this, uh, this came with it, and I went, oh my God, I've seen him at the bloody meetings, uh, the World War One Association meetings. So I was like, oh my gosh, that just uh, clicked in. Now, this is old. This is 2013. They still have the, they still have the uh, um, World War One Illustrated. I, I get them uh, quarterly. Uh, right now, but I did want to pop this in very quickly because I think it's uh, I don't know if um, Meandry Mike has it or he wants it, but I mean he's right now, you know, knee-deep in Napoleon and whatnot. And when I saw this, I was like, hmm, he may, uh, uh, it's the um, the Waterloo book over here, Napoleon's Last Army, the art of uh, Keith Rocco, and uh, that looks pretty darn good. And then there's a Grant Rising thing here as well. And uh, there's the, oh my gosh, I didn't even know there's a Napoleon magazine. And, uh, well, what am I saying? Of course there would be. It's probably four trillion times more popular than uh, the Great War. Okay, that being said, like I, um, like I mentioned, um, I've scanned this and at least you can read. It's really well written. You want to know what's really well written? And I was like, talk about an appropriate article to start the, uh, the first issue with is uh, doing a bit of backtrack, uh, you know, when I uh, bring in the, uh, like how th things kind of started. So the Balkan War, Wars, 1912, 1913, I just finished reading it. Um, and it was, I was like, oh my gosh, you're connecting the dots so much. It was like um, just a nice little primer. It just, it was, it's just, Boom, boom, boom. I was like, okay, this is what happened. This is what happened. This is what happened. You know, 1908. I was like, oh my God, you're, all these things have been trying to, um, it's like all in one place. It was really nice. So let's just go through the, uh, the magazine super quick. And um, you can see that, uh, you know, they talk about uh, this. Yeah, like I said, this was, a, was just a really, really good article. Uh, yeah, got to find out all about like how it all started up and getting, um, uh, I, I mean, obviously, I was thinking as well about Corvinus Wargaming, what uh, his take would be on a lot of this, a uh, lot of this stuff, for sure. Since his uh, knowledge is spectacular when it comes to uh, the Ottoman Empire and the Turks and all that stuff. So there's, yeah. So I went. Th it's good. It's it was a darn good article. And the, uh, the next issue, it says uh, it'll be part two. They go into um, the Second Balkan War, but. Uh, and um, as that's, I'm sure this isn't even, well, it's from Osprey, but I'm sure this isn't even the artwork. Look at this uh, picture. I'm glad I got to show this to you, actually. Um, there we go. Really, oh, and there's another beautiful thing I noticed. QR codes all over the flipping place. I'm like, you guys, and this is 2013. I'm like, you guys are geniuses. And there's the Zeppelin squir Scourge. I haven't read that yet. There, there's some more QR codes if you want to go and find out. It's like, wow. And I think this is the one I'm going to go and read next, actually, is uh, French Plan uh, 17 here and find out about this. This is part one. Oh, my. This is, oh, yes, that was the other thing I noticed. 
well, I didn't notice it right off the bat. You see that name? David Schroeder. I went, oh my God. So, uh, yep, uh, the creator of um, Der Weltkrieg. There he is. And when I saw his picture, I went, oh my God. He wrote this bloody article. So that is just yet again, I uh, oh, just love these dots that are getting conne uh, connected. And this was, uh, I did read this as well. Uh, the Myths and Mysteries of the Great War in the Air, and it's only part one. And it was pretty neat to find out about, um, there were, well, they talk about here that, no, actually it was the Ottoman uh, Italy using it in, in the um, Italo-Turkish War, 1911-1912. And uh, they go on and on about that, but look, yes. Uh, it's also, without a doubt, uh, I just think the SPAD, well, the, specifically the SPAD 13, it doesn't really matter, uh, I, the spat is just to me a thing of beauty. Look at that beautiful plane. It is just, and I've like I've said before, if you're into uh, painting models, it's also an uh, easy one to do. The struts are straight up and down, all that type of stuff. It's really easy to get get around to. There's nothing complicated about. Uh, oh yeah, I, I paint spads from here to tomorrow. Another QR code. Awesome. So that's it. I just wanted to. Oh, neato. One I didn't uh, haven't looked in the back here. So what is that? Dazzle camouflage is descriptive. Oh, nice. Ah, oh, there's just. Anyways, yeah, I wanted to show it. Oh, okay. And I'm just going to show a couple of other things, which was interesting, because I got two things in the mail and I, uh, today, and one was from Dusseldorf, and the other one was um, from Australia. I was like, wait a minute, and I know somebody from du Dusseldorf. Is Harold Bosma doing something interesting? And uh, um, no, it wasn't from him. And uh, I also know a couple of people from Australia and it wasn't from them as well. I've completely forgot that I had purchased this uh, on eBay. And um, so I've got that, so I'm not taking it out right now, but it's, I think this is when he first, I'll kind of take a look. It's either, it's one of the things, he's either just became field marshal or something I, like, I don't know what, hor but I know that he ended up getting the highest um, level or whatever you could get as a general um, for the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Um, yeah, and that was a big day for him as far as I remember. And then my uh, keychain, they, they sent me a, I'm a member of uh, uh, Hor Berlin there, Hor.live, and uh, they sent me that, uh, maybe I'll pop it in, in the uh, links if you want to go and take a look. There's a bazillion different music uh, genres they have there. Um, yeah, I, I uh, I'm one of their members, and I was like, cool, I'm gonna, I got a real funky, real funky uh, keychain. So that's it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, do uh, issue number two uh, for the second one, and that'll be, that's this one here. I think this will be kind of neat to do. Yep, and it gets me to go through these uh, magazines, and I can share them with you as well. All right, hope you're having fun. See ya.